press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primers. The easiest way to deploy a container inside a Red Hat OpenShift cluster is using their web console. In the last video on the Red Hat OpenShift introduction, we saw how we can deploy a Hello World application. In this video, we are going to see how to deploy a Spring Boot application inside OpenShift. In fact, both are almost similar. The only difference is the image is different. Since OpenShift is based on Kubernetes, you're going to deploy containers inside Kubernetes. It's going to be the same process, whether I deploy in Google Cloud or Red Hat's OpenShift, or if I deploy into EKS or Azure Kubernetes service. All container deployments in a Kubernetes environment, it's going to be almost similar, except for small things which are specific to the platform. If you have already seen my video on how to deploy to GKE, it's almost the same. The only good part about OpenShift is it provides us the YAML configuration so you don't have to remember any YAML or you don't have to copy paste any of it. So I'm going to use my existing project called Tech Primers, which I created in my free OpenShift account. And right now I don't have anything running in this. In order to deploy a new container, I'm clicking on the workloads option in the console. The moment I click on workloads, I can see pods, deployments, config, stateful set, secrets, config maps, etc. I'm going to click on deployments because I want to create a new Spring Boot deployment and I want to create a replication factor of two. Basically, I want to scale my pods to two instances. Let me click on the create deployment. The good part about OpenShift is it provides you the default template. And this is very helpful when you want to deploy a single container. In our case, we are going to deploy a Spring Boot application. If you remember, I had built some Spring Boot images some time ago. I'm going to use the same images. If I go to the container registry in my Google Cloud account, I have built some Spring Boot images. Let's use one of this image. So I'm going to use the version 3 of this image. So I can, and this is all public image. So anybody can use it. So you can also use the same image. So you can leverage the same inside your OpenShift cluster let me come back to the configuration detail if you look at it this has some default naming convention for example it says the name of the deployment as example it's under the tech primers namespace which is fine also the name of the application is hello openshift and also there are tags and matching labels which are added for tagging our application which is hello hyphen openshift i want to reduce the replication factor to two also the container image is what I need to change here. So since I copied my image, I'm just pasting it here and I want my version three tag. That's it. Also my Spring Boot application is running on 8080. So I want to expose the same port 8080 via the deployment. That's it. I don't have to create anything else. Since I already built the image, I'm reusing it. I don't want you to show this again by building it because I already have documented this under the Spring Boot KTS example. So this command for creating an image is present here. So you can build the same. So I don't want to show that again. Now the moment I click on create option, my pods are getting created. See that right now there is only one pod and it's scaling up to the second pod. If I click on pods tab, this is going to show me the different pods which I have. So these are the two different pods which we just deployed. Basically we deployed a Spring Boot application which got containerize and we pushed that as a docker image and these docker images are now getting deployed as a part of my redshift environment now in order to access this environment i need to create a service the moment i click on networking i can see different options and i'm going to use service and routes in case of openshift i need to create a route because i need to expose a web url so that's when i will use a route but before the route gets created i need to create a service so let's create a service. Let's use the same example name. Also, the app selector is the application which we need to select. In our case, our application name was hello-openshift. So let's select the same thing. Also, the port we are going to expose is 8080 and the target port is 8080. I'm going to use the same. Let's click on create option. This will create a new service which is linked with the pods. So the moment I click on pods, see that the pods with the label app equal to openshift is being filtered now coming back to the route 
also the service is going to be a cluster ip so i don't have an ip address which i can access from outside the cluster if you're within the cluster you can obviously use the cluster ip to access the deployments now in order to access the application outside the cluster i need to create a route i'm going to call this route as hello openshift demo let's use the same example if you have a domain name you can directly give that i don't have any so i'm not giving it the path is slash and here i can select my service example was the name of my service so i'm going to click on the example service also the port i wanted to expose which is the 8080 to 8080 which is what we redirected in the service i'm using the same port and let me click on create now this should create a new route so route is basically the url with which you can access your application and this is the url with which we are going to access see that we are getting a typical white label error which spring boot returns right and you can see the spring boot logo and there is a rest endpoint called v3 lazy and that works so that is the endpoint which we had for our version 3 of the application and i can see that this is getting exposed so this is how you can deploy a spring boot application see irrespective of the application type you can use the same methodology to deploy any type of application in this case i used a container image which was having a spring boot example however if you're deploying a python image you can use the same process same for node.js or any type of container and using the red hats or online web console is the easiest way to deploy an application without having to install any command line interface or anything there is one more way of deploying the same using the command line interface from openshift if you want me to make a video on that do let me know i can definitely give it a try as always if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video thank you very much